We're in part two of this series, Blue Christmas, and uh, we started this series and did this series because this is a great time of the year. It really is festive and full of life and stuff, but it is also can be, can be very blue. And so last, last week, we talked about depression and, and how all of us at one phase or one stage or the other, we probably have dealt with these feelings of either blue or, or even depression-like like symptoms. And what we, what we discovered is that it's okay to not be okay. That it's like nothing strange is happening to us. It's okay that we have these feelings and really all the problems arise when we try to hide them and act like they don't exist and we don't address them. You can catch that online, you guys. Go catch up with part one. Today we're going to continue that thought and um, with this blue Christmas theme. And I want to talk to you today about how to not get, not, not ever get to this place where you are just spent, empty, and, and like Elijah last week, where he had this amazing victory, this amazing moment, but right after that, he just was spent. Have you ever been to that place where you just felt spent, where you're just like emotion, emotionally gone? Today, I want to talk to you about how can you maybe never get to that? How can you protect yourself from getting to that place? Whether it was because of a, a, a challenge, it was a crisis, it was, it was something in, in the moment that you expended yourself, or like Elijah, maybe it was a victory. Maybe it was something that was as exciting that you accomplished, but after it, it just felt like, I need to go hibernate somewhere. You know, I need to go seclude and get filled up again. So how do we make sure that our, our spiritual tank doesn't get to that place of empty and depleted? That's what I want to talk to you about today. And before we jump into... Um, the scriptures and, and, and where we're going to, the teaching part of this message, I, I want to draw some parallels on um, the nine reasons why you run out of gas, like in your car, like why you run out of gas, and the parallel to it being like when we run out of gas emotionally, where we run out of gas spiritually. How many of you here have run out of gas before? Anyone ever run out of gas? Run out of gas? And that sucked, man. It's just a terrible feeling, you know, and you just filled with just regret and memories of like, I should have. You know why you did. You know you had opportunities a lot of time to take care of that, but you did it. So I want to just kind of draw some parallels, just have a little fun with this, and then we'll get into the teaching part of this message. It's there in your notes, you guys. So here are some nine reasons why we run out of gas, and we're going to draw the parallel. Here's number one. Number one is not starting out with a full tank. Not starting out with a full tank. Now, I'm not naive or anything like that. When I first got a car, that's what I said. I'm like, I'm going to always have a full tank. It don't work that way. It, don't ever, it does not work that way. But when you say, like when you're going on a long trip, I mean, you know you got to fill up, okay? Especially if you're going that way, to, like over the grapevine, you pass the TA, and you're like, oh, dang it, I forgot to fill up. How you start your day sets your day. Can I get an amen, somebody? So how you, uh, you got to start your day right in order to set the day. So that's number one, not starting out with a full tank. Number two is that we are being too busy to pause and refuel. And that's where a lot of us kind of that raise our hand right there. We're just in a hurry, too busy. Uh, we know we need to get some gas. We're like, oh, I can push it a little bit further. I can, you know, or, or it's like, you know what, I'm, I'm already late for my appointment. I'm already late. I can't. I just, I'll get it. I'll get it later. So we just don't, we don't pause. And if you don't have that regular pause where you refuel emotionally, spiritually, even where you are refreshed and refueled relationally, you will run out of gas. You'll run out of gas. Here's number three. We can become unaware of hidden leaks. And these hidden leaks in our life are draining us. And, and maybe we just, we're not aware that, there, that we have, there's a leak somewhere in our system. The two areas of your life, not in your notes, but there's two areas of your life where, where, can be the, where, where you're going to get some hidden leaks the most are the areas of your relationships and your responsibilities. Those are two areas that are just like can, can produce some, some leakage. And I mean, here at Discovery, and even in this series, we talk about relationships. That, like, that is one of the things you need, especially when you're feeling depressed and anxious and overburdened. You need to get in community. And we talk about that. And we did talk about it even last week, uh, about that a little bit, but I mean, you know, there are some relationships that are not adding value to you. They are draining you. There are some relationships that are a drain. It's, it is a source of a leak. It's not adding energy, adding value. There are some relationships that it's maybe you're not aware of it, but it's actually taking from your life. It's a source of drainage. And then the other area is, is your responsibilities, that, that the more responsibilities you have and you take on, just the, the more susceptible you are and likely to spring a leak 
in life. Okay, so that's number three. Number four is ignoring the owner's manual. Ignoring the owner's manual. It's still there where you left it when you bought the car. It's in the glove compartment. It's all nice and crisp. You never touched the thing, seen the thing after the guy showed you the thing. You know, it's just, it's sitting right there and it will tell you, that owner's manual will tell you how far your car can go. What your car can't do, what it can do, how many miles per gallon, how big of a tank it has, all right? So, and it's been, it's been tested over and over and over on the assembly line before it ever got, it's been tested by the creators and the manufacturers and the designers. They will tell you in that book how, how many miles per gallon it can go and how big that tank is. And even if it takes regular or supreme or whatever it is, it'll tell you right there, you guys. And uh, I don't care how big of faith you got and how much of a prayer warrior you are. You can pray all you want and have believe all you want, but that tank in your car is not getting any bigger than how the creators made that tank. Okay, so listen, the Bible is your owner's manual for life. It will tell you what you can do in life and what you can't do in life. And you will, and people will, ignore that manual to our own detriment, all right? It it tells us what we can do, how far we can go, and people all over the world, I mean, they're ignoring the owner's manual, and so their careers are being destroyed, and dreams are being destroyed, and their their soul and even spiritual tank is being just empty because they're not not going, they're they're not living how God designed them. And so the owner's manual, the Bible, talks about some things like the Sabbath day's rest, And how how that's just not a good idea. Like you were not designed for the pace of life that we currently find ourselves in, that culture's pace of life. You weren't designed to go, 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 go and not have any pause and not have any break. You were designed, God made you to have a rest, to to operate by stress and release, uh, by by work and rest. And you can ignore that and continue to ignore that, but you're going to end up empty. You're going to get depleted in life. I love what Psalm chapter 1 says. It's not in your notes, but in Psalm chapter 1, it talks about, he says, uh, blessed are those who do not follow the world's way, who do not sit in the seat of mockers or listen to the counsel of the world. He says, but blessed are those who know, who know the law. They, they meditate on the law of God and the word of God day and night. And he says, they will be like trees planted. Come on, you guys know this one? By planted by streams of water. They're, he says that they'll bear, bear fruit in season and everything they do will prosper. Why? Because they know the word. You can't ignore the owner's manual. If you do, you're going to run out on, you're gonna run on empty. Okay, you're going to empty again. Number five, why we run out of gas? We just drive too fast. Driving too fast. You're going to waste. Hurry depletes your emotions and your, your, your strength and your, your, your soul even. Hurry depletes you of your energy. You waste more gas driving 80 than you do 40. All right? And some of you, have you ever got up to like a, a stoplight and, and there's another car in the, in the lane next to you and he don't know it, but he just entered a race. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. We're gonna, we are racing, okay? This is going to happen. I'm going to beat this guy. That depletes, you guys, this, this pace. So what's the pace of your life right now? Could it be that the reason why you're, you're just, you, you get to these places of emptiness and spent because you're just going too fast and too hard? Here's number six. Not watching my gauges. Not watching. And the gauges are right there. They're right in front of you. It'll tell you, you know, your pressure. You got all gauges for everything. You got pressure gauge, oil gauge, tune-up gauge. You got your gas gauge. It's all right there, but we're ignoring. Maybe we're too busy. We're too distracted to check the gauges of our vehicle. And so what are the gauges that we need to keep an eye on to make sure that we in our lives are not getting to that place again where we're empty and, and don't have the strength anymore and need to retreat again? How, what are some gauges? Let me give you a few. Sleep is a gauge you need to be watching. How much sleep are you getting or, or are you not getting? That needs to be a gauge that you're looking at to see am I, what, am I getting my energy refueled. Or your health is a gauge. You need to be monitoring your health. Your weight is a gauge that you need to be watching. the Because I don't know about you, but when I get stressed and overloaded, I just, man, I can eat. I'll stuff it down. I'll eat it away. I can get that way. So, so weight is a gauge. How about this one? Your irritability gauge. Your irritability. So when the people closest to you go, like your, your spouse or your kids or maybe your friends and the people close to you say, hey, man, you're just, 
you are touchy lately. Or you got a good friend who just is honest. Like, you are a jerk. What, the, what is wrong with you? You know, what's the, and it, that irritability is a, is a good gauge to see if I'm just responding negatively or, 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 or just sharply back to people. Or I have a short fuse. That's a gauge that something's off. Something is off inside. Not watching gauges. Here's number seven. Being overloaded. Being overloaded. So the more weight that you carry, the more load you have, the more gas and the more gas you are going to expense. And, and we can lie to ourselves and say, I can take it. Oh, I can take more. I can take another project. I can take a few. I can take more hours. I can take another job. I can take another job. I can take another commitment. I can take another relationship. And, and, and we are overextended and overloaded. And it's wasting gas. And, and sometimes it's not even about how much you're carrying. Listen, it's about how you're carrying it. Sometimes it's not even about how much you're, you're carrying in life. Sometimes we're just carrying it the wrong way all by ourselves. And I'm going to show you in, in the scriptures how God wants you and has designed you to carry the load that you have and the responsibilities you have in a healthy way that does not spend you of all of your energy. All right, here's number eight. Uh, why you run out of gas? Rapid acceleration. Rapid acceleration. You got a lead foot. That's why. Okay, you just, you rapid. So this, in other words, pressure, you, you have a pressure to do it now. You, and I'm not an adv- advocating for procrastination or anything like that, but you just got this pressure, like I gotta do it. I gotta do it now, 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 now. Everything's gotta be done now, now, now. And maybe that's just, maybe that, that, that need to do it now is just expending a lot of your energy. Or number nine, and this is where we're gonna sit today, is just not allowing for time to fill up. And that's where a lot of us probably ran out of gas. We just didn't stop. We didn't pause. We didn't pull over. We didn't take the opportunity to just pause and fill up. So what I want to do is look at how can we keep our tank full? How do we, how do we stay full? In every season, whether the challenge or crisis or its victory or success is that we would just stay full and stay replenished. How do we, how do, we do that? And what we need, you guys, what we need Today, especially in our culture, is more margin. We need more margin. Margin is the space between your load and your limit. That's what margin is. And we need more margin in life. And we try to cram things in, cram more things into our schedule, cram more things into our life, cram more commitment, even with your budget. I mean, you know, your budget needs margin. Your budget needs some space into it where you got to create some reserve where you're not always running on empty and running out. We need more margin in our life. So to teach this, uh, we're going to use Matthew chapter 11, verses, a couple of verses there in Matthew chapter 11 where Jesus is, is telling us the secret here on how to stay replenished and refueled and never get into that place, man, where we're just spent and empty. All right, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30. Jesus said, if you are tired, let me pause right there. That's every single one of us here, okay? Every one of us are we're tired. We're, we're just, we've given, we're given a lot, a lot of energy. We're tired from carrying heavy burdens. That's the overload. That's the stress. That's the, the no margin lifestyle, man. We're just, we're tired from carrying heavy burdens. He says, come to me and I will give you rest. And he says, and then I'm going to tell you how, this is what I want you to do. He said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I'm gentle and humble in spirit and you will find rest for your soul. For the yoke I share with you is easy to wear, and the load, he said, that I have, that load, is light. So I want to give you six steps today on how to keep your tank full. Four of them are right here in this this set of scriptures, in Jesus' words. And then two of them are just uh, two things that I want to add to it to help you keep a full tank in this season, honestly, in every season. So here it is. got to take some notes from you guys. Number one, if you want to keep a full tank is you got to get fed up with the way your current life is, with, with the pace of life, the, of what is. You got to get to this place where you are just dissatisfied with the current status quo. Because as long as you are willing to be stressed out, as long as you are willing to continue to say yes to more things, as long as you are willing to be overextended, as long as you are willing to be sick and tired of si- being sick and tired, then nothing's going to change. You got to get to this place where you just are fed up with the status quo, with culture's pace of life. You know how we change and when we change? The, the time that we change most often is, is when we experience pain. You don't change when you see the light. You change when you feel the heat. 
That's when we change in life. And so this, this space that we find ourselves in sometimes where we're just kind of spent in, in burden and, and even like empty is, is actually a good thing. I'm glad it's there because it's showing you you weren't meant to live this way. You're, that, that, let, that pain should cause you to go, wait a second, something is, is off and you got to get fed up. That's number one. Let's go to our scripture that we're studying in Matthew chapter 11. Jesus says, if you're tired, so you got to recognize that you're tired. You got to recognize that you're carrying heavy burdens. You got to recognize that you're stressed out, that you're running on empty. Are you tired of it? That's what you got to get. Are you tired of running on empty? Are you tired of being stressed out with the pace of life? And are you going to do something about it? Are you going to say, I'm going to change somehow, some way, because if I don't listen, something's going to break. Something is going to break if this, if my life does not change. And, and if you don't get fed up with the pace of life and, and the pace that culture, honestly, has us in and molds for us, then you have two options. You're either going to have a breakdown or a breakthrough. And it's your, it's your choice. You can allow this, this space that you're in to, to propel you towards a breakthrough or you are going to to have a breakdown. And if you say, Pastor Jason, I'm fed up. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of getting to this place and keep coming back to, I, I am tired of it. And if you, if you say that, listen, this could be one of the most important messages you've heard all year. Okay, so if, if that's you, you say, you know what? I'm tired of this. I need to change. All right, let's go to step two. Okay, step two is where we need to come to Jesus. Come to, in fact, Jesus in this passage uses three verbs. We're gonna study every one of them. He says, come, Take and learn. Okay, come, take, learn. First he says, come to me. Now he says, come to me and, and, and bring me the good in your life. Bring me the bad in your life. Bring me the stress in your life. Bring me the painful in your life. Bring me the frustrating in your life. Bring me the ugly. Bring me the exhausting. Like, bring, just, just come to me and I will give you a sermon. That's, that's not what he said, is it? Okay, come to me and I'll give you what? I want you to notice this, please, of, of, of where, who are you to come to and what is the promise of, uh, that you will get when you come? Because he didn't say, come, hey, come to church. Hey, come to religion. Hey, come to rules. He didn't say that because the problem that, that we have, you guys, the, the solution for it is not a plan of time management. And that's not a bad thing. That's not a bad thing at all, but it's just not the solution. It's not the antidote for our soul problem. We have a soul problem. And the, the answer is not a plan. It's not a philosophy. It's not a program. It definitely ain't a pill. Listen, it's a person. The answer is a person. Now, in the Bible, people often came to Jesus for a lot of different reasons. People come to Jesus for forgiveness. They came to Jesus for healing. They came to Jesus for answers. They came to, to, to Jesus for food. They came to Jesus. Some of them came to criticize him. Some came to question him. Some came as skeptics. Listen, it didn't matter how people came to Jesus. Jesus just cared that they came. Just come. He just went. So Jesus doesn't care how you come as long as you just come. You can come today and say, God, I'm wiped out. God, I'm tired. God, I'm, I'm burnt out. God, I'm stressed. I'm depressed. I'm lonely. I'm guilty. I'm ashamed. God, I'm bitter. God, I'm unfulfilled. I'm worried. Jesus doesn't care why you come as long as you come today. Can I get an amen, church? Amen. Just come. He's saying, come to me. Come to me. The answer is a person. Come to me and I will give you rest. And the amazing thing about Jesus is that he, what he promises when you come, he says this in John chapter 6, verse 37. Jesus says, anyone coming to me, I will never reject. I will never reject. So you never have to worry that, that when you come that you say, oh, you don't know what I've done, Jesus. You don't, you, you don't know the things that I've done. Jesus says, doesn't matter. Just come. Just come to me. Well, you don't know my background, Jesus. Come. Come to me. Well, you don't know the things that, that I'm going to do. I still got some plans this week to do. You don't, Jesus says, it doesn't matter. Just, just come. It doesn't matter what your past or your present or your future problems. Jesus just cares that you come. Just come. And then notice what he will give when you come. He says, come to me and I will give you rest. And later in the, in, in the verse, he says, I, I will give you rest for your souls. Now, that's a deeper kind of rest than a physical rest, isn't it? You know, because the problem that we have isn't just tired muscles, right? That's not, that's not our problem. We don't have tired muscles. Our problem is a tired mind. 
Our problem is, is tired emotions, and, and it, we're, we're spiritually tired, and our soul is, is tired. You need rest from your soul, for your soul, not your muscles. Okay, some of you probably need rest for your muscles, but most of us need more exercise for our muscles. That's not our problem, right? We're not tired in our muscles. We're tired of the tension. We're tired of the worry. We're tired of the anxiety. We're tired of the expectations. We're tired of the comparison. We're just tired of the pace and the stress. Well, how do you unwind your soul? How do you unwind your emotions when you feel it crushing down? You know, most people, what they do is, is culture is what teaches us you go and, you know, go on a vacation or something, go in a, go get a hobby, go work out, you know, go to a movie or go do, go do something. What's interesting is that, is that culture, culture, when you get stressed and you get exhausted, culture says, go, Jesus says, come. See, culture would say, hey, go spend some money, go do that, go do that, go do that. And Jesus said, no, don't go. Come, come to me and I'll give you rest for your soul. You see, all those other things you can do, they, you can get you, get, you can get rest physically, but it won't provide you rest for your soul. And that's what you need when you're in this condition. That's why we're empty. It's not because our muscles are tired. It's because our mind is, our emotions are, our soul is tired. And we need to come to Jesus. Don't, don't, don't just go, come. And then number three, we got to get to this place where we just give up control. Now we're getting to it, okay? Now we're getting to the real reason why we're stressed out. Most of us, the reason why we're stressed out and overloaded is because we're trying to control everything. We're trying to stay in control of everything. We're, we're trying too much to stay in control. And the greater your need for control, I'm telling you, the greater stress you're going to have in life and the greater overload you're going to have in your life. And God, God did not ask you to control anything but one thing, one thing, you self-control. That's it. That's all God asks you to control is yourself. Everything else, you got to learn how to give up control. I mean, in the scripture, every, you, you can't control your, your parents. You can't control your kids. You can't control your job. You can't control the economy. You can't control your, your past. You definitely can't control that. You can't control the future. What you can control is self-control, and that's good. That's a good kind of control. It's a fruit of the Spirit. All the other things that we're trying to control, we need to get to this place where we give it up and give up control to God. So Jesus says, he says, first, come to me. And then he says, take my yoke upon you. Take my yoke. And now he's not talking about like a chicken yoke, an egg yoke here, right? A lot of you guys know he's, this is a, a wooden piece. Uh, it's a piece of wood with two holes in it. You, they would put this, this yoke on cows or cattle or even horses, and they would link them up together, and they would, what they were doing alone, so they wouldn't have to pull alone, it would lighten the load because now they're doing it together. So he's saying, Jesus is saying, look, take my yoke upon you, to which some people look at this and they go, this doesn't sound very restful. I got enough yoke, I got enough burdens, I got enough things and responsibilities to take care of, and now Jesus, you're telling me to get another one? Another responsibility, another thing to do, another religious duties to perform, and it doesn't sound very restful. Please listen. The purpose of a yoke is to lighten the load. That's the purpose. It's, it's, it, we are trying to control it all ourselves and do it all ourselves, and you were not designed to do it alone. Jesus is saying, take my yoke, this one, because you got a whole bunch of, you're, you got all this pressure on you. Jesus said, look, you got all that. All you need is this one. Take my yoke. Take my yoke upon you, and I will give you, he says, rest. For my yoke, he says, is easy, and my burden is light. And why is the burden light? Right? It's not rocket science, right? Because what you, when you carry it alone, you get someone helping you, it lightens the load. It's not rocket science, right? It's just, it's, it, yeah, that's what he's saying. I want to share the load with you. One translation, he says, my yoke fits you perfectly. It fits perfectly. Now, I want to teach this to you because a yoke in the scriptures, a yoke is a symbol of two things, okay? The first thing it's a symbol of is partnership. When you see yoke, a yoke in scripture, it's a symbol of partnership where God is wanting to, in this case, partner with you. Look at Psalm 50, 55 verse 22. He says, pile your troubles on where? On God's shoulders. He'll carry your load and he'll help you out. Now listen, whose shoulders are stronger, yours or God's? 
Okay, that's good. Like, why, do we, why do we then want to carry it all on our own? Why do we insist on carrying our own load and pushing it ourselves? Right now, right now, if you're overloaded, you know what that means? It means right now, at this moment, if you're overloaded, you feel the pressure? At this moment, what that means is you're not yoked to Jesus. Because his, his yoke is light. You see, some of you know the Lord, but you're carrying your own burden. All right, can somebody receive that today, okay? All right, you know the Lord, you know him, you love him, but you're carrying your burden yourself. You're not, you're not yoked to Jesus. It's, it's a symbol of a partnership. The second thing is a symbol of, is a symbol of control because when you yoke the animals together, they would, it would help them to go in the same direction, right? They wouldn't, they wouldn't fall off in a ditch. You can get them to go in the same direction. Also, you, you, you can get them to go at the right pace, the pace that they need to, because you know, the master knows where, you know, how far they need to go and how much energy they need to expense. So listen, when you are yoked to Jesus, you are going the same direction as Jesus is going at the same pace that Jesus is going. Amen, somebody? When you're, you, you cannot go faster than Jesus goes when you're yoked to Jesus. You cannot go in a different direction than Jesus goes when you're yoked to Jesus. When I'm yoked to Christ, I'm going in the same direction at the same pace that God wants me to go. Galatians 5.25 says, Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Now, this is kind of frustrating for some of us because we can get in a hurry, but God is not. God is never in a hurry. We might be, but God's, that's the frustrating thing. Romans 3.28 says, Our lives get in step with God by letting Him set the pace. Who's setting your pace right now? Who's setting the pace of your life? You know, in, in, in Scripture, in the New Testament, what's interesting to me is that you never see Jesus running anywhere. Jesus is never in a hurry. Even when his friend Lazarus is dying, he's like nonchalantly taking his time. Jesus is never in a hurry. And listen, you won't be here either if you're yoked and connected to Christ. Now, I want to tell you a little secret about this. Listen, in life, you will be yoked to something. And if you're not yoked to Jesus, you're going to yoke yourself to something. And it may be, it may be someone else's expectation of you. It may be other people's expectation. It may be your, your spouse or your boss or your friends. You're going to be yoked to something. And Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Here's the problem. The fact is, most of you don't have one yoke. You have a dozen yokes. You got the expectations of, oh, you need to do this and do this and take care of this and make sure you do that and do that and do that. And you're so overwhelmed and you're crushing under the weight. And then we think that the, that the answer is to escape and go on a vacation. But the only problem with that is you go with you. <laughs> you're there, right? and so you, the pressure goes with you. The problem, that's because the problem's up here. The problem's in our mind. The problem's in our soul, and you need to give up control. And you know, you'll never have the peace of God until you get to this place where you give up the control of all those things that you're trying to control, of all those things you're trying to, to hold on to and to hold tightly to. You'll never have the peace of God. But when you do, when you surrender the control to God, I'm telling you, he gives you that peace. And you come to him, no matter, and no matter what you've done and what you've experienced, you no know, what's your past or whatever, he accepts you. He doesn't reject you just as you are. And you take his yoke upon you. You let him set the pace. You let him set the direction. And the load starts to lighten. It gets lighter. And then anytime I take off this yoke and I'm disconnected from his pace, from his will, from his direction, then it starts, I start to put other yokes on me and it gets burdened again. It gets crushing again. It gets heavy again. So we need to get to this place where we give up control. And then that, that last verb he says was where we just need to learn to trust. Learn to trust. And this is where, you know, you keep your tank filled right here is Remember, Jesus says, come, then he says, take, and then he says, now he says, learn. Matthew 11, back to our verse, he says, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Jesus says, look, watch how I do it. I mean, watch how I lived. Watch how I prioritize my life, which means you got to read your Bible. 
You have to get, you have to, Jesus saying, look, I modeled for you this lifestyle. Watch how I lived. Watch how I walked. Watch my priorities. Watch how I did it because I'm gentle in heart and you will find rest for your souls. And learning is a process, you guys, isn't it? It's a process to learn. You didn't get overburdened overnight and you're not going to get un-overburdened overnight either. I made up a word right there. It ain't gonna, you ain't going to reverse that overnight either. You got to learn this way, this, this model where Jesus said, hey, learn from me. And this is what I want you to learn. He said, this is what I want you to learn. For I am. And then he gives us, he gives us two things that you wouldn't expect in this situation because you'd want him to say, hey, learn from me. Learn from my endurance and stamina. That's how you you keep, that's how you stay strong and you don't get, they'll learn from my strength. I'm the son of God. Learn my power and my anointing. Learn from my authority. He didn't say that, man. He said, learn my gentleness. Learn my humility. Why in the, what does that have to do with us getting stressed? With us getting like burdened and, and, and stressed out with the pace of life? I think, I think the reason why he said this is because the, one of the I think the two big causes that we get over burden is because of our aggression and arrogance. Our aggression and our arrogance. Aggression is where we don't want to wait. We want it now. We want to overcommit. We want it now. We'll jump to it. We're not, we don't consider. Don't consider the cost. Don't consider the price. Just go. And I want it and I want it now. We get, we, that's, that's what aggression is. And then arrogance is, I know what's best for my life. I know what's, and not only, not only do I know what's best for my life, but I know what's best for your life too, okay? I, want to control, I don't know who want to control me, but I want to control you as well. How many of you know someone like that? Don't elbow them right now, okay? But, but that's controlling people. They just, you don't know how, how much your ego has to do with the reason why you're so stressed out in life right now, okay? Because you, you just want to control your life and everybody's life, and if everyone just do what I want them to do, then everybody will be okay. That's just that controlling, arrogant nature and the arrogance to want to control everything. You want to know what the secret to Jesus' pace? Jesus' pace of life and his peace of life. You want to know one of the secrets? Because Jesus only did what the Father told him to do. Twelve times in the book of John, Jesus said that, that phrase, I only do what my Father tells me to do. I don't overextend. I don't overcommit. I just do what my father tells me to do. I don't try to do what they try. I don't let them put a yoke on me. I don't live for their expectation, for their pleasure, what they want. I just do what God tells me to do. Man, why don't you, why don't you try trusting God with the control of your life, with the direction and the pace of your life, and just see what he can do when it's in his hands. Let me give you a few scriptures. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Since the Lord is directing our steps why try to understand everything? I don't need to try. Look, if I'm yoked to him, I know I'm going in the right direction. He's not going to leave me in a ditch. I can trust God. I don't need to wrap my mind around everything. The beautiful thing about this, when, you, when you're yoked to Christ, when you're in step with the Holy Spirit, have you ever been there? Have you ever been to this place? Maybe a, just a season or a place in your life where you just knew that you were so connected to God. You were in step with the Spirit. Isn't there, there is no greater peace than to be in step with the Spirit because he's in control. He just, he just, ha, things just work out. You don't know how they work out, but they work out. I mean, you know what I'm talking about, that you don't need to understand stuff, but a door opens up, a window opens up, provision comes, a relationship comes just at the right time that you didn't need to stress about it. It just works itself out when I'm in step with God. I can't tell you how much peace that I have doing what, what, what I do, even as a, as, as a pastor leading this church, that, that there are so many things that could crush me. And I, when I started Discovery, I was like, you know what? I don't, want, I don't want to control it. I can't control it. I can't fulfill it, God. It's, it is all yours. And step by step, I have seen God provide and open doors in ways that I can't even understand. I look back and just go, wow, look what God did. Because, listen, I didn't do it. I didn't know how it got done. I don't know how we got here. I've just been walking with Jesus, okay? I'm just taking a stroll with Jesus one step at a time and door after door, opportunity after opportunity, relationship after relationship, provision after provision. I'm just telling you, there's no greater peace than walking in step to where you don't have to control everything or understand everything because you know you're yoked to Jesus. He's setting the pace. 
He's setting the direction. Psalm 142, verse 3, says, when I am ready to give up, and I want to pause right there, because that's where some of you are at today. Some of you are ready to give up. Maybe you're ready to give up on your marriage. Some of you are ready to give up on your career. Maybe you're ready to give up on your dream. I don't know what it is, but some of you, you, you may be here ready to give up. He says, when I'm ready to give up, look, he knows what I should do. And when I'm yoked with him, I don't have to worry about that because he's setting the pace. He's setting my direction. I don't have to let it stress me out or burden me anymore. You want to know how to trust God more? How, to get to, how do you build you know, your trust? How do you build your faith to trust God in whatever season you're in? You want to know how? The best way? The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing from the word of God. You want, you want to trust God more? Get more of the word of God in you. I'm telling you, the more of God's word you get in you, the more you're going to be able to trust God and put your faith in him, which leads me to these last two points, you guys. Number five, start every day. Okay, you want to get to this place where you, where you don't get empty, you don't get spent. Start every day by filling your tank. Don't wait for Sunday to come. I'm glad you're here. This is great. I'm, I'm fantastic that you're here, but don't wait for Sunday to come. Don't, you, you get filled up on Sunday, and then you never pause again. You never pause. You know you should. You feel like you should. You say, no, 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 I can do it. I can take it. I can take it. I can keep going. I don't have to wait. I can keep going. I got more. I got things I got to do. I got things I got to do. And you just, you know you should stop and get gas, and you don't. You don't. And you drag yourself in here, and you get filled up again, which is great, but then you don't pause. Start, look, you're not supposed to be filled up once a week. You need to get filled up every day day. Every day be filled up by God. I love the, the message paraphrase of Matthew 6, 6, where Jesus says how to, he kind of tells us how to, again, his model. He says, follow the way I do it. You need to find a quiet and secluded place. And that's where some of you need to start. You just need to find a place. And some of you know my, my place is my, I have an office, a little chair, a desk. That's my place. That's my quiet seclude. And I never, some of you are like, I don't have an office. I used to not have an office for many years. I used to have a corner with a chair. Okay. That was my place. And where, but you need to find a quiet and secluded place where you could every day hear from God. So you won't be tempted, look at this, to role play before God. So you won't be tempted to pretend before God or just to, to do your religious duty, your religious pa- prayers, your, your just duty of, of, of your scriptures you're supposed to read. Don't talk to God in King James Version, Old English. You know, God's not from England, you guys, okay? Don't role play with God. Just, just, he says, just be there as simply and honestly as you can imagine, as you can manage. Just, just be honest, just get into his presence. And Jesus says, when you do that, when you can do that, when you take off your mask, stop role playing, stop acting like it's all together, the focus will shift from you to God. Because when you start, when you start in his presence, I'm telling you, you're going to have these burdens, these stresses, the calendar. You're going to see these big things that are on your mind, that are on your heart, that are causing stress. But Jesus says, if you can just find that quiet place, get alone, stop role playing, just be there simply and honestly. As you do that, the focus is going to shift from your big problems to your big God. Can I get an amen, you guys? That's what's going to happen. It's going to shift your focus It's going to shift the weight that you're feeling, the emptiness that you're feeling, and you will begin to sense his grace. See, and that's what you need to start your day with. That's, you need a sense of God's grace when you start your day, every day. See, some of you, you start your day with social media. You start your day, some of you, by looking at your calendar, and you get a sense of what your commitments are. You get a sense of your meetings and your responsibility. You get a sense of what you need to accomplish today. More than that, when you start your day, you need to get a sense of God's grace when you start your day. I'm telling you, I'm trying to give you some help, you guys, so that you don't get to this place where you're empty, where you're spent, where even you go throughout the day and you come back and you feel like you're defeated. You didn't accomplish anything that you wanted to set out to accomplish. Well, begin your day filling your tank. Here's number six. I got to go quick. I'm taking long. Stay connected to my church family. Stay connected to the family of God. Let me read you these scriptures. I'm going too long. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Let us not give up the habit of meeting 
together, man. Don't, don't. We need to be in community. Make, pri- make these relationships, these spiritual relationships a priority, not just church, but even in community and groups, as some are in the habit of doing. Instead, let us encourage one another all the more. Ephesians 1.23, the church is Christ's body, and it is filled with Christ who completely fills everything else. What you need is more spiritual filling stations. You know, this is a spiritual filling station. Like right now, you're being filled. I'm filling you. The Holy Spirit is, is filling you. You need more spiritual filling stations throughout your week. You, you know, I never, I never wanted to like set out that would de- to like have a, a big church. That was not my goal, to have a big church or the fastest growing church. Recently, we, they said we're the 29th fastest growing church in America. That's not what we set out. That's not what my, I didn't set out to have like a big church or a, fast-growing church. What I want is a healthy church. And that's why I'm bringing you messages like this. These ain't messages that grow the churches, messages that grow you, okay? And I don't, think, I don't think you get one or the other. You can have big and healthy, but what I'm saying is I want people to look on at Discovery Church, at you, the people of Discovery Church, and see something different. What better, what better witness do we have to the world that where the world is all stressed out, you know, overburdened, running the pace of culture that they can't keep up with, what better witness do we have than to be a people who are not stressed, have the peace of God, the joy of God, living differently in this world? The problem is today, onlookers, people who don't know Jesus, look at the church and they see nothing different. They see nothing different from someone who says they're a Christian and someone who's not a Christian. All they see is you go to another meeting every week. They don't need another meeting, man. They need something different. They need people who are, what better witness than to be someone who walks in God's peace, who, who, who's not affected by the burden and the cares of the world, but who's yoked to Jesus. So what are your, what's weighing you down today? What's, what's the pressure that you come in with today? Is it, is it your marriage? What problems? I don't know. What it is. is it your finances? Is it some relationships? Is it your kids? Is it your health? What pressures? I believe the reason why you came today, listen to me, the reason why you came today was to hear God say and whisper to your spirit, come to me. Come to me. You don't, you don't need a program. You don't need a, a plan. You don't need a pill. Come come to me, and I'll give you rest. Let me end with this verse. i got to be quick. Amplified version of this this same verse we're studying. It just takes the Greek words and kind kind of explains a little bit more of the Greek that's in there. He says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden and overburdened. And Jesus says, I'll cause you to rest. I will ease, relieve, and refresh your soul. Somebody, that's why you came. He says, take my yoke when you do that. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest, relief, ease, refreshment, recreation, and blessed quiet for your souls. All that is in that Greek word right there, rest. And that's why I believe some of you came, because the pace you are living is not the pace you were designed for. What you are carrying is not how God designed you to carry it. The invitation today, come and take my yoke. Come on, let's bow our heads right there. Can we just do that? Can we come? Some of you are here today, man, and you are fed up. Can we just go to God in prayer with that heart? God, we are fed up with the pace of life, with the status quo of this life, of just running without you. God, we're fed up. We're tired of being tired and stressed. So today, right now, Jesus, I come. I come with my issues. I come with my baggage, my hurts. I come, and God, you said you will not reject me, so I thank you right now for receiving me just as I am. I come, God, and I give up the control. I don't need to control everything. I don't need to control everyone. I don't need to control my future anymore. God, I'm taking your yoke today. I'm taking all the other expectations, everything else off me, and I'm yoking up with you, Jesus. You set the pace from now on, God. You set my direction from now on, God. I give you control. Help me, God, as I walk with you to learn to trust you, to learn to trust you, God. Maybe you're here today, and and that's what you need to do. You need to just come to Jesus and surrender the control of your life. 
and maybe you've never done that before, but today you're tired. You're tired of being tired, and you're fed up with doing it yourself, and you just know right now that God has revealed to you that you are not meant to do it yourself. You are meant to do it with Him. And there's an invitation for you today to come, to just as you are to come. And maybe you've, you've walked with God before, and you have felt what it feels like to be in step with His Spirit but right now you're out of step and you feel so far away. Today I want to pray for you to surrender the control again, to come and surrender the control of your life to Jesus. That's what salvation is. For some of you, it's the first time that you're going to make this decision. For others, you just need to make it again and get back in step and come home where you belong. I'm not going to have you come up to the front. I'm not going to single you out, but I want to pray for you right where you are. If that's you and you just, you're tired of this pace of life and you're ready to come and give the control of your life to Jesus, will you just lift up your hand right where you're seated? Come on, lift it up, lift it up, be brave. Yeah, yeah, keep it up. Yes, 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 all over. Yeah, yeah, amen, let's see that. Yep, 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 yes, praise God. All over this place, praise God. Uh Uh-huh, here, all over here too. Amen, amen, there, yep. Awesome. Go ahead and put your hands down. Amen. Over here in the corner. Uh, If I miss you, God saw that hand, man. Just pray something like this. Just say, Jesus, forgive me of my sins, of all of my wrongs. I'm tired of living without you. I don't want to live without you anymore. So today I surrender the control of my life. Today I am coming just as I am. And I thank you for loving me and accepting me and receiving me. Today, God, I come. I ask that you would fill me, Jesus. Be my Lord, be my God, be my Savior. Take over the control. And from this day forward, help me to live for you by your power, by your strength, by your spirit. I want to live for you, God. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Come on, give God some praise if you receive that, church. Amen.